Back to the Future meets Day of the Tentacle and Alien Isolation. This is Five Nights at Freddy's, but not as you know it. What's up everyone, Games Apprentice here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit on Steam and the Steam Deck. Now, if you're a subscriber to my channel, hopefully my opening line of this video stopped you switching away. When I was approached by Mega Cat Studios to review this game, I was excited because I like Mega Cat Studios, but I don't think I could have less interest in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. I think like a lot of adult gamers, when someone mentions Five Nights at Freddy's, I picture a jump scare camera switching game that I'd probably have loved when I was like 10. In my generation, that was called Night Trap and it was terrible, but I loved it and it scared the crap out of me. After looking at the trailer though for this new game, my preconceived impressions of what it would be like were gone and I was left intrigued, so here we are. Into the Pit is sort of a point and click adventure survival horror game. I say sort of point and click as you do zero point and clicking, but you move your character around and get a little bit of narrative when you look at an object, pick up objects and use them from within your inventory. All within a 90s point and click graphical style. The narrative for Into the Pit is that you're a young kid whose dad drops him off at this old pizzeria. Your dad's got fond memories of the pizzeria from when he was a kid and speaks of this secret ball pit. Now though, it's a rundown old place that's practically empty. You go in search of this ball pit and it turns out that for some reason the ball pit is a portal between present day and 1985, which was infamously the year of the first Back to the Future movie and there'll be plenty of those references. In 1985 the pizzeria is packed, there's an arcade full of machines, there's even a band that plays which is a bunch of mechanical creatures. It doesn't take long before things kick off and the kids are running for their lives as mechanical bears start chasing them down. You manage to escape back to the present day but as your dad comes to pick you up, he gets dragged into the ball pit and climbs back out and he now seems to be possessed by one of the Five Nights at Freddy's creatures and you're the only one who can see it. Obviously the narrative now becomes trying to get your dad back or unpossess him or whatever. Once you possess dad takes you home and you manage to escape the house, the game then begins to open up with four places that you can visit in your hometown in addition to the present and 1985 versions of the pizzeria. The main thing that the game does well is how atmospheric it is. Its retro art style lure you into a false sense of security, making it seem impossible for this game to feel like a horror movie, but it does an excellent job of creating tension using every horror trope in the book. Dark rooms you need to explore, a flashlight that keeps running out of battery, and the character tripping up it unexplained noises and lots of imagery scattered around of the monsters that are hunting you. And being hunted is definitely how it feels which is why I likened it to Alien Isolation. Often you need to move through a location that's one or more monsters moving through it as well. There are multiple doors and exits to most rooms allowing you to avoid it a lot of the time and there are also noise makers that you can set off allowing you to lure it into one location so you can get to another while it's distracted. There are also multiple places you can hide and when you go into those, it switches into first person, adding a bit more immersion and tension. I tried playing the game on both my laptop and Steam Deck, and let me tell you, I found it so much more immersive on the Steam Deck. Having to hold the source of the atmosphere, tension and jump scares physically in your hand, I just think it feels so much more immersive that it makes you feel even more on edge. My only complaint with this game are that you can't save it manually, which is a bit annoying. There were a couple of times when I accidentally left the 80s pizzeria, and when you do that, the game ends, so then I was having to redo bits. The other is that it's lacking a bit in survival mechanics, basically just being run, a set of noises, and hide. I think what it lacks in this, so it makes up for an overall presentation, design, and with the job it does managing to create a tense atmospheric game that just looks so good. I definitely recommend picking up this game, especially if you're a Steam Deck owner. I think it's a great fit for the system, and you can get it for on Steam for about £17, $20, which seems like a fair price. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you're into Steam Deck's handheld retro games or just want to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you next time.